Americans boo soccer players kneeling during the national anthem as professional sports begins to absolutely self-destruct. In this video, we're going to take a look at the latest pathetic example of virtue signaling from our pampered professional athletes, how Texas fans responded, which you're going to love, and how the woke world of sports is in the process of utterly destroying itself and proving once again the age-old adage, say it with me, Get woke, go broke, you're not going to want to miss this. Greetings everyone, patriots all across the globe. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you as always. If this is your first time here on this channel, a very warm welcome to you. We post two videos a day analyzing current events, analyze some super awesome conservative trends so that we can all live in the present and a lot of even better things to come. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a regular part of our channel where each each and every day, we together celebrate the inevitable collapse of left-wing globalism. How does that sound? And it gets even better. And the unstoppable rise of a new conservative age. Now, before we dive in here, let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video. And that is Virtual Shield. Gang, if you are not using a VPN or virtual private network on your desktop, tablet, or mobile device while browsing the internet, then you really are exposing yourself to a lot of potential danger. But protecting yourself online simply has never been easier. And to make it even better, Virtual Shield is offering our audience 50% off all VPN plans and all premium add-ons. So do not wait. It is a limited time offer. Click on the link in the description below and sign up for a free 30-day trial to Virtual Shield VPN. Today, all right, King, let's dive right in here. Now, once again, I'm sorry to say that we have yet another example of sanctimonious virtue signaling coming from the woke world of sports. But at the same time, I'm very excited to report that American fans have had enough of this ridiculous pseudo-moralizing coming from our privileged class. Now, the latest example of professional sports teams' self-destruction comes from Major League Soccer. Now, to its credit, MLS is the only sporting event that's opening up their stadiums to fans. But then, they may want to think about that again here. This happened in Frisco, Texas, when the players for the FC Dallas and Nashville SC teams took to the field just before the start of the game. They collectively kneeled for the national anthem. Now, I don't know what genius told these players that it's all right to kneel for the national anthem in Frisco, Texas. But Texans don't take too kindly to pampered professional athletes, members of our privileged class. They don't take too kindly to them disrespecting and desecrating our national symbols, while at the same time cashing in on their plush paychecks. No one in that stadium needed lessons about social justice from any of these athletes. But you see, that doesn't stop leftist arrogance. Leftist arrogance is a perpetual Karen. It literally lives off the need to tell others how to live their lives. Well, regardless, the Texas fans sure let them have it. They got majorly booed throughout the national anthem. It was utterly humiliating for the players. There they had thought they were paragons of virtue showing the woke world just how woke they really are. And then all of a sudden, they're demonized as traitors and they become the objects of mockery and scorn. It really was humiliating. I kid you not, this was so humiliating that you actually had players slam their fans. They slammed the audience. Dallas defender Reggie Cannon was so enraged that actually came out and said that the booing was, quote, disgusting and disgraceful. <laughs> they, I mean, gang, this is a public relations nightmare. You're actually calling your fans disgusting and disgraceful when you're the one dishonoring and disrespecting the national anthem and the flag for which hundreds of thousands have died defending so that you can have your pampered professional career. And then you have a bunch of Texans, God bless Texas, you have a bunch of Texans that call out your pathetic hypocrisy and then you have the gall to call them disgusting and disgraceful. Here's what he said. I'll quote him. Quote, how disgraceful is that? You got fans booing you for people taking a stand for what they believe in. Millions of other people support this cause and we discuss with every other team in the league what we're going to do and we've got fans booing us in our own stadium. I think it was absolutely disgusting. Close quote. Hey there, uh, what's his name? Reggie, Reggie Cannon. Reggie, look, I know you're not a logician. 
you're a social justice warrior, so you obviously are not particularly prone to rational thought, but do uh, you really have to be a genius to figure out here that you are doing precisely what you're faulting the Texas fans are doing? You're, you're denouncing them for taking a stand for what they believe in, which is the flag and our national anthem. In other words, why do you want us to respect you disrespecting our flag? Why do you expect us to respect you when you disrespect the flag? Well, it's the same kind of absurdity you get when BLM activists who spent the last two months tearing down and defacing monuments, getting all hysterical when someone comes along and defaces their monuments. Again, I know, you know woke warrior logic isn't really this Reggie can Cannon's thing, but hey, a little advice there maybe will prevent any recurrence of this public humiliation in the future. Just a little advice. Now, of course, you would have thought that Major League Soccer would have learned at least something from the abysmal ratings. I mean, the utterly disastrous ratings that the NBA and Major League Baseball have been suffering due to their wokeness. We did a video some days back on ratings collapse for both the NBA and Major League Baseball. After their opening days of celebrating all things woke, with, you know, Black Lives Matter graffitied on basketball courts and pitchers' mounds across the nation. Well, the ratings are in. And as far as the National Basketball Association is concerned, um, they are currently experiencing, gang, their worst ratings ever. NBA viewership is down 26% on TNT, 6% on ESPN. They're barely netting an average of 1.6 million viewers, which is significantly down from the 2.8 million they got at the same point in their season last year. Major League Baseball fared slightly better. After a record start to their season, their ratings came crashing down to earth with about a 2.7 million viewer average on Fox. So it's now being widely acknowledged that Major League Baseball is at last suffering from the broke economics that come from getting woke. And it really is sad. Actually, the ratings are so bad that Fox Sports, Sports host Clay Travis ended up triggering Mark Cuban, the leftist globalist owner of the Dallas Mavericks, who of course arrogated himself to lecture all white people on how we all needed to take responsibility for our systemic racism. What Travis did is he pointed out the massive discrepancy between Fox News ratings and NBA ratings. And the discrepancy is dramatic. Here's how he put it, quote, head to head on Monday night on cable, Tucker Carlson viewership, 4.5 million. Lakers Nuggets viewership, 1.5 million. Head to head on Tuesday night, Sean Hannity, 4.6 million. Uh, Blazers Mavs, 930,000. Yikes, NBA. And so Cuban fired back on Twitter. Oh yeah, then why do advertisers have to pay three times as much for NBA ad than from Fox? Hmm. And Travis responded, hey Mark, then I've got your attention. Are you ready to publicly repudiate China and tweet your support for Hong Kong protesters since you're such a paragon of wokeness? All right, are you gonna denounce the Chinese concentration camps or are you just gonna to continue to dribble for Chairman Xi, the NBA and Chinese government are in cahoots here. And of course, Cuban said nothing to that. And it's such a good point, by the way. Well, we have to understand what's really going on here with these absurd virtue signalings and the BLM demonstrations and professional sports is a clash. And it's a clash that's highly representative of the clash that's going on all over the world between left-wing globalists and the nationalist populist backlash. A backlash that wants to recover national sovereignty, economic security you know, by bringing our manufacturing back home, and most especially our cultural security, where our nation's culture, customs, and traditions are honored and revered rather than repudiated. You, globalists hate that. Globalists hate honoring and revering national symbols. They see it as nativist and racist and bigoted. And that's precisely what we're seeing play out in our professional sports arenas. Here you have a bunch of pampered athletes being paid by pampered owners and corporations that are thoroughly globalists as they come. They're supported and encouraged by sports media that is notoriously leftist and globalist. And they never fail to impose their globalist values on the knuckle-draggers that make up their fan base in mid-America. But the joke's on them, you see. 
as we've talked about before, the whole point of professional sports over the last several decades has been to foster national unity. This was especially true with baseball after the Civil War. Baseball's National League was formed in 1876, just 10 years after the end of the Civil War. The American League was just formed a, a few years later. And they were both part of this effort to foster a renewed sense of national unity of such, such a horrible you know, social you know, uh, calamity as the Civil War. And so baseball games were regularly played on the 4th of July. And then shortly after World War II, the national anthem became the staple inaugural invocation for sporting events in general throughout the nation. So sports have long been a very important site, very important location for the fostering of unifying national sentiments. So what the heck do these pampered professional athletes expect in terms of audience reaction when they spit in the face of those very unifying national sentiments? What precisely do they expect? Why on earth do they expect their fans to show them respect that they deliberately refuse to show to the symbols of our national unity? Again, I know logic isn't the priority of social justice warriors who claim to fight racism with more racism, who claim they're anti-fascist by being fully fascist. I get it. But make no mistake. Until they come to their senses, the woke world of professional sports is going to continue to alienate their fan base. And the more they alienate their fan base, the more they drain their ad revenue. So as it turns out, we can now officially add professional soccer to the increasing list of industries that are learning the hard way all about a fundamental law of the universe. Say it with me. Get woke. <laughs> Go broke. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. And you will definitely want to check out my latest video. I just uploaded it on a massive voter backlash going on as Black Lives Matter mob demands whites move out of their homes and give them back to black people. Voters are absolutely sick of this racist nonsense, and you're not going to want to miss the backlash. So make sure to click on the link, and I will see you over there. God bless.